Hi guys, Janice with Needles and Fashion, and I'm here to give you a tutorial on how to make the high waist shorts that's featured on my blog, www.needlesandfashion.blogspot.com. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so for this particular tutorial, you're gonna need a couple supplies. The most important thing is McCall's pattern 6930. It's a shorts pattern. We're gonna actually be using view B for this uh, particular tutorial. You're going to need an invisible zipper. Um, I have a red one. You only need 9 inches. I'm going to use this one because this red one is rather long. I think it's about 22 inches. You're going to need a ruler, scissors or a rotary cutter, some marking chalk, and that's just about it. Um, for this particular tutorial, you will not need the pockets for... Um, 6930. If you want to put pockets in, you can. It would be rather difficult to do according to this tutorial because the particular style of pockets have um, a cutout. And if you do that and do the high waist, it may be rather difficult. It may require you to actually um, make your shorts a two piece with the bottom and a very large waistband. But we're going to attempt to do this with one piece for each side. So. So first thing I'm going to do is lay out my pattern. I ironed it, um, put my pattern weights down, just another supply you need. And what I'm going to do is make a mark that's five inches above the actual top of my pattern piece. I'm just going to make that mark on both sides. Now, I'm going to make uh, go ahead and draw a straight line where I mark the five inches on both sides. And for the waistband, excuse me, for the side seam of this particular pattern, I'm going to go ahead and sketch in the actual um, shape that excludes the pockets from the um, front side. I'm just going to go around as if that pocket was never cut out. And then I'm going to indent um, about an inch and a half to two inches and pivot. And you'll be able to see this a little bit more when I cut it. And then I'm going to come in about a half an inch from the crotch area to give the this the, um, the pivoting that's needed to... Um, to cover the high-waisted part. Typically, your waist is larger than the area right below your bust. If that's not the case, what you can do is measure straight up and then make your adjustments from there. You wanna do that before you get too far in a project, which means once you get your front and back cut out, you can go ahead and um, uh, seam the, excuse me, sew the uh, inseams and one of the uh, side seams and try on the garment to see where you need to make adjustments. I'm gonna do the same thing for over here. I'm gonna come in. And I don't have to sketch out uh, anything on the back because it doesn't have a place for the pocket. Now, before we continue to cut this out, I wanna let you know that this particular pattern requires you to do a um, dart. So what we're going to do is mark our darts. I'm just going to mark where the dart's supposed to go. And I'm going to measure the size of my dart. So here my dart is three and a half inches. I'm going to measure three and a half inches from this marking that I made at the end of the um, pattern paper. And I'm going to make that Point right in the middle and I'm going to connect that with the two dart placements I made. I'm going to remove my weights. I'm just going to fold this over and make that dart here. reason why I'm doing that is because we're going to make a diamond dart. And this is actually the first time I'm doing it but it makes a lot of sense because what it does is allows you to put a dart in your clothing but not um, interrupt the actual size of the waistband at the top. So I made the markings for that. 
And I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm going to measure my dart. Here it's three and a half inches as well. And right in the middle here of my two markings, I'm going to make a, dart, uh, a point and I'm going to connect that. And I'm going to remove my weights. And make that marking and connect that. Okay, so now that that's done, I can go ahead and move on to actually cutting out this particular uh, pattern. So I'm going to start with this area here. go ahead and remove my weights, get those situated. I am pretty much done with this pattern. So I'm going to fold this up and I'm going to put these away and when I come back we're going to go ahead and start on the, um, the sewing of the darts and then the attack. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and attach my front and back pieces at the actual crotch area with a 5 8 an inch seam. Click my strings. And I'm going to go on to putting my darts in. using my markings. And moving on to the other side. Since this is work I'm working on just one of the <clears throat> the legs, I'm going to go ahead and sew the side seams on this one. I won't be doing it on the other one.
Okay, so that portion is done. I'm going to put my um, strings here. I'm going to press these seams open for right now on the outer seam and the inner seam. And then I'm going to continue on and complete the other um, leg without actually sewing all of the side seam. So we'll be right back. Sides in and my other shorts leg with the right sides out. I'm going to attach them here at the crotch. And I am going to match up my seams and pin. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to pin this area, excuse me, sew this area from the crouch outwards. I'm doing this because I did a, a manual adjustment to the pattern and I want to make sure that everything is aligned and that there's not one side, like the back is um, higher than the front. So I'm going to go ahead and sew from the inner seam out. That way I can make any adjustments off the top end. Now, once I do get this squared away, I want to make sure that I um, go back after I do my fitting and reinforce this stitch. This is one of the most important stitches of a pants. All right, and I'm going to do the same thing with this side. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try this on and see if I need to make any adjustments. I finished off the attachment or the construction of the actual shorts. I tried it on for fitting. I didn't have to make any adjustments, which is good. One of the good things about 6930 is once you've used it before and you've cut the appropriate size, it really has a good fit. So everything worked out with the darts and everything. I'm just going to cut off some of my excess strings here. And we're going to move on to... Um, creating uh, the seam for the zipper. Now, if you have a serger, you definitely want to go ahead and finish off your edges with your with your serger. If you don't, then you can do a zigzag stitch or use sprinkling shears. Um, I went ahead and did that because if you're going to make these shorts, typically the the um, fabrics that you make these type of shorts out of typically frays. So you want to make sure that you go ahead and do that. Now, I'm using Ankara print. If this was like the wax Ankara print, it probably wouldn't um, fray as much, but I believe um, that even if I was using wax, that I would have searched it as well. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and fold my shorts with the side seam for my zipper up. I'm just going to press down this area. And I'm going to continue that seam press all the way to the top. I'm going to do this side first. Keeping that seam size the same. I'm just going to turn around real quick and I'm going to go ahead and um, 
do a, a five millimeter seam on this. So I'm just gonna turn around and do that really quick. And I'm not gonna backstitch it. And I'm just following that crease line that I made with the iron. Stitch it where my normal stitching begins. Okay. It's going to open that right on up. Face this down again. Just press this seam open. Now that that's pressed open, I'm going to grab my zipper. And I'm going to stretch it beyond this because this is way, way uh, longer than what I need. And I'm just going to pin it here. Let's see. Pins are all over the place. You want to make sure that your zipper is right there in the middle of your seam. So I'm going to pin the bottom and I'm also going to pin the top. Put one here in the middle too. And I'm working with the right side of the zipper now. You can work with whichever one is your preference. So I have my zipper pin to my closed seam. I'm going to take it over here to the sewing machine and we're going to go ahead and attach our visible zipper. So we'll be right back.
of both legs and pressed it and also pressed an inch and a half hem for the waistband. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and sew that waistband. Now I could have double folded this. You can do that if you wanted to keep it more of a clean look. But I want you to visibly see how large this hem is. This is folded in correctly. Okay, so I have my waistband, waistband hem. I need to press that. And what I'm going to do with the bottom of my legs, I'm actually going to fold this over again. and hem it all the way around. I'm just going to hem it right close to the edge. And this is a 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, which is the double folded. Right, I'm going to do the other leg. I'll be coming back around. That's why I didn't back stitch that part. So. Okay, so that moment when you're recording and your battery goes dead. <laughs> so I went ahead and finished the, um, the double hemming of my other leg and I went ahead and pressed out my shorts and, and we're pretty much done. So this is the finished product. It's just short enough, not too long. Um, I definitely plan on making a couple more. This is actually my second pair today. So here's my first ones here. And I have one more to make to add to the blog. So I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Um, be sure to visit www.needlesandfashion.blogspot.com. And I'll see you guys later soon.